Hi, and thank you everybody for joining us today on another edition of the Extreme Performance Series. Uh, today, I'm uh, happy to have another one of my wonderful peers with me, a mentor that I spend a lot of time with, uh, Robbie. And Robbie's going to be here to talk about vCenter. So Robbie, why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah, hi. Uh, by the way, it's really a pleasure to present with Mark because he's awesome and I learn as much from him as he learns from me. So let's get that out of the way. Uh, I work on vCenter performance and frankly, the performance of anything that talks to vCenter. I've been at VMware about 18 years. So you've done uh, quite a bit of time. You spent a lot of time around vCenter. I know you've presented at VMworld a couple of times, lots of good recorded videos, good content there. Uh, but today we want to chat about something that we hear about often, which is customers concerned about the number of operations vCenter can do, and really kind of that scalability. Is that right? Absolutely. It's probably one of the most common questions I hear. So it's good that we're discussing it here. Awesome. So I know you have a few slides to help us walk through some of these concepts here today. So I'll let you start that up. Okay, let's uh, start a screen share. So there are two hard limits to keep in mind that, are, that it, these limits are global. So they're across an entire vCenter. You can do, a, frankly, about 640, actually the number is more like 600, but around 640 concurrent operations before vCenter will start queuing uh, operations that you send to it. Okay, so about 600 can be live at once. And you have about 2,000 sessions that you can use at a time. So in other words, you can log in about 2,000 times before vCenter will start rejecting those sessions. So these are two hard limits that are vCenter wide. And when people talk about vCenter scalability, they often think about these limits. And then they think, well, why am I not able to do 600 operations at a time? Why do I seem more limited by that than that? And then what I often tell people is that's only part of the equation. Perhaps the most important part of the equation is that there are per host and per data store and per NIC limits that we use to make sure that a host is not spending all of its time doing uh, clones of emotions or whatever, but instead is able to run VMs. So think of a host as having a capacity of say 16 and think of most operations as having a cost of two. When you look at these numbers, you say, okay, this means that a given host can be involved in eight operations at a time. There are other, there are costs for other operations. For example, storage vMotion is a bit more expensive. So it's cost per host is, is eight instead of just two. And then there are other operations that are cheaper like link clones. And these reflect an estimate by us about how much of an impact it has on the platform. So because again, if we do too many at a time, you're gonna impact the performance of virtual machines. And finally, I'll say that if you're cloning a virtual machine that's powered on, then you have to take a snapshot first. So that's an additional dimension you have to keep in mind, but there'll be a small amount of time to create the snapshot and then to get rid of, get rid of the snapshot. So let's, let's try to put this into an example for everybody here. Let's, uh, you know, let's walk through a scenario so that people can help visualize this because we see the cost, we see per host, you know, math is usually easy for everybody, but um, let's try to depict this. So I, I understand you have an example for us. I do, and thank you for asking that, Mark. I think if you can understand this slide, well, you understand this slide, but if, if anyone watching this video, if you understand this slide, you will, I think, get the gist of what we're talking about here. Imagine I'm doing a clone of a VM from host A, I'm cloning that VM onto host B. So we have vCenter, we have two hosts, we have a VM, and we're gonna clone it from one host to the other. Remember what we said, a clone has a cost to the host of two slots. Now that's a cost that gets paid on the source, and it also gets paid on the destination. And so pictorially, you can see for each host, they now have a number of free slots and then two slots are being used by this clone. So now you can easily see if you tried to do eight clones at a time, you would consume all of the free slots on one host and you wouldn't be able to do any more. And so you would block, even though vCenter as a whole has more capacity, this particular host does not. And that'd be kind of a bit of a safety mechanism, like you said here too, just kind of, kind of really stress that. The fact is we want to manage churn that's happening on a host, right? So that's the way in which we're kind of gating a number of operations there, correct? That is absolutely right. And I think the other thing to keep in mind, and I'm sure the folks that are watching this are aware as well, is some of these limits also depend a bit on how fast your storage subsystem is or how fast your networking subsystem is. Because sure, you can we can show you how to do more, but if you have a an underperforming storage or network subsystem, then you're not going to get necessarily what you what you want out of that. And so, in this example, we're talking about kind of the, the cloning here. Right. Um, but what what about the idea of okay, say if we look at vMotion, right? Because yeah. now we have another category of calculation to think about here, because we got to think about the NIC as well, correct? 
Absolutely. Let me show you that in a minute. Let me just first close out this slide by saying one reason that we ask folks ask folks to spread when you do a clone, don't just do a clone from one host to every other host in your system. Try to have multi, if feasible from a storage perspective, have clones populated on multiple hosts because then you can get better concurrency. Now let's get back to your vMotion question. So you're right, vMotion needs both a host component as well as a NIC component. So let me de depict that here. So if we want to do a vMotion, we pay a cost not just on the host, mm -hmm. but we also pay a cost on the NIC. So for a NIC, the cost is one, and you have a, a total capacity per NIC of eight. And this is for a 10 gig or 25 gig NIC. And for a host, again, you have a capacity of 16 and the cost per operation is two. So for vMotion, it's pretty straightforward, right? You pay the cost for the host and you pay the cost for the NIC. Where this gets interesting and what I hope people take away from this talk is now imagine you're doing a clone and a vMotion. Well, for the clone, you have to be concerned about the host cost. For the vMotion, you have to be concerned about both the host cost and the NIC cost. So if you overlay all of those, it helps give you an estimate about how many things you can actually do at once. Well, I think that's really important here because that idea of, okay, well, I'm, I'm doing many operations and they start to seem to queue up here on, on me and how come I'm, I'm not doing them? And really this is the breakdown. We have to think about each of the resources and each of the gates for those resources in order to do that. And then I think you brought, raised another interesting point with that idea of concurrency, right? We want to exploit as much concurrency as we can to put as many operations through. And that idea here is, you know, we need to think about that in the workflows, maybe some of the VRA things we're doing, because, um, you know, what if we're doing kind of multiple V-motions, we're moving stuff all over the place. Is that yeah, that's you have a, another example coming up here, right? I sure do. It's, it's, it's like we planned this ahead of time, isn't it? Now, um, if you do multiple V-motions, for example, to the same host, you can see that that host, in this case, host B, it's going to get charged twice, right? Because it's the the destination of multiple vMotions. And so sometimes people will say, hey, I'm not seeing as many vMotions as I expect. Well, maybe a number of those vMotions are going to the same host, in which case you're not going to get the concurrency that you might expect. So it is, as you said, it's important to figure out where are operations going and how can you stage them so that you're going to get the maximum concurrency. It really becomes important to understand some of these workflows, what we're attempting to do, uh, you know, with some of the VRA landscapes, uh, what's right. coming from what host to where, because then we can exploit all that concurrency, right? Right. Now, what, what would that look like to say, you know, the customers, you know, what does it look like in some of the vCenter pictures, you know, when they start to see queuing or they don't really know what's happening? Yeah, that's a great question. So I took a bunch of screenshots just to try to help hopefully illustrate what's going on. Remember how I said that for a clone, the cost is two, the total capacity on a host is 16. So you can do eight at a time. I'm showing you a screenshot where I did like 32 at a time. And what you see is eight clones that are occurring at the same time. They all say copying virtual machine. Oops, I'm sorry. And when you exceed eight on that host, you see a different message. You see reserving resources for operation. That's a sign that that host cannot take any more operations. It doesn't mean vCenter can't do anything else. It just means that host cannot. And you'll see the same thing whether you're doing a clone, whether you're migrating a powered off VM. Notice same thing, you have eight of these happening at once and one that's blocked waiting for resources on that host. And you see the same thing from a vMotion. Now vMotion in this case occurred so quickly that I wasn't able to get eight concurrently on the screen at once, but take my word for it. There's eight happening at a time and the rest get queued up. And so an easy way to get better concurrency is to clone from multiple hosts to multiple other hosts. And so as you can see here, if you were to add this up, there's more than eight copying virtual machine stages happening at the same time because I'm doing it from multiple hosts to multiple hosts. And then finally, the last thing I'll point out is that storage vMotion is a bit more expensive. We limit that to two on a host at once. And so when I do a storage vMotion, you can see two are active and the rest are waiting for resources. They're all waiting to reserve resources. So if you want better concurrency, you go ahead and do this from multiple hosts to multiple hosts, and it looks something like this. And in one thing that we didn't point out, but you, there's obviously resources after this talk, there are per NIC limits, per host limits, and per data store limits. So keep track, it's, it's important to keep track of all of those. That does help, I hope, alleviate some of the fear where people go, oh, I'm worried about concurrency. Well, no, we just need to understand the fundamentals here, and then we can make them work for us. We can go ahead and right. exploit that by thinking, where do these operations need to occur as we spread them across hosts and clusters? And then 
we get a lot of activity happening at the same time. So uh, excellent, excellent explanation, Ravi. Thank you for sharing some of that wisdom with us. And certainly check out the links uh, below here with some more information. And Ravi, thank you very much for joining us today. Appreciate it. Oh, man, it was totally my pleasure. I'm so glad to get to talk to you guys. Stay safe and have fun. Thanks, Ravi. Thank you.